We asked film critics and curators across Canada to vote on what they think are the greatest films ever directed by Canadians. It's a very strange uh, thing that to compare movies together. You know, it's art. Well put, Denis. But let's have some fun anyway and count down the top 10. Number 10, Titanic. I figure life's a gift, and I don't intend on wasting it. Three of the five highest grossing films of all time worldwide were directed by a Canadian, and that Canadian is, of course, Capus Casing, Ontario born James Cameron. People are, you know, coming out of the theater, you know, crying as opposed to going, wow, what a great special <laughs> effects film, <laughs> which, you know, I think that's the triumph of the film. The epic 1997 disaster romance that won 11 Oscars, made $2.2 billion, turned Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winston into household names, and, at least as far as he was concerned, made James Cameron King of the World! <laughs> Number nine, In the Heat of the Night. You aren't taking me anywhere, you dig? Released during the height of the civil rights movement, it was one of the first studio films to directly address the racial tensions that were engulfing America. It also confirmed Jewison as one of Canada's greatest cinematic exports. Where you come from and where your roots are are very much a part of you. Number eight, Crazy. A family drama about a young gay man growing up with four brothers and a conservative father in the Montreal suburbs became a blockbuster hit. The late, great Jean-Marc Vallée's breakout film Crazy is a funny and deeply moving ride through the Quebecois culture of the 1960s and 70s. It launched Vallée's career, which would later include directing the entire first season of Big Little Lies and the Oscar-winning film Dallas Buyers Club. Number seven, Dead Ringers. You haven't had any experience until I've had it too. Two bodies, two minds, one soul. That was the eerie tagline of David Cronenberg's 1988 psychological thriller Dead Ringers, a deeply unsettling film that follows identical twin gynecologists, both played by Jeremy Irons, as they spiral into drug addiction and depravity. This is impressively just one of six films by the director to make our list top 50. To me, from the inside, my, the films feel very Canadian. And it narrowly lost out on being voted the greatest film ever directed by a David Cronenberg. That honor goes to... Number six. Crash. The year is 1996. Audiences storm out of the theater at the Cannes Film Festival, outraged by a movie about a group of middle-aged Torontonians who find arousal in car crashes. The film they just saw, Crash. Which is absolutely not to be confused with another film of the same name that also happens to be directed by a Canadian, but did not receive a single vote in this poll. The best crash is undeniably the Cronenberg Crash which may have caused mass hysterics when it debuted nearly 30 years ago, but has gone on to be rightfully regarded as the deeply original and challenging masterpiece that it is. Number five, Kanesatake, 270 Years of Resistance. Artist, activist, and filmmaker, Alanis Abomsawin, has made more than 50 films across an extraordinary career spanning over 50 years. But her 1993 documentary is her magnum opus. Chronicling the 1990 Oka Crisis, one of the most infamous confrontations between the Canadian state and First Nations people, Abomaswin spent 78 days behind the barricades in treacherous conditions to record these events. Out of 250 hours of footage, she crafted the narrative that would go on to become the first documentary to win Best Canadian Feature at TIFF. Number four, On Sandy. Before he directed some of the most acclaimed Hollywood films of the past decade, Denis Villeneuve gave us Ensemble, the Oscar-nominated 2010 film that established him as one of the great filmmakers of his generation. The film follows Canadian twins who travel to their mother's native country in the Middle East to uncover her past amidst a bloody civil war. The result is harrowing and textured and represented a landmark shift in the focus of Quebec cinema from local history to global concerns. Number three, The Sweet Hereafter. Adam McGoin's The Sweet Hereafter offers an unflinching analysis of grief in its depiction of the aftermath of a school bus crashing into an icy British Columbian lake. I don't know if you've been keeping track, but this is now the fourth film in the top 10 to have a central plot point involving the destruction of a vehicle. I don't know what this says about the psyches of Canadian filmmakers, but I just needed to make this observation. But what's important is how much The Sweet Hereafter put English Canadian cinema on the world map. It remains the only fully Canadian production to receive an Oscar nomination for Best Director. Number two, Stories We Tell. A few years after giving us 
a truly extraordinary performance as one of the survivors of the bus crash in The Sweet Hereafter, Sarah Pauly began making her own films. Well, I guess if you could start by describing Mom in as much detail as possible. Me? Do you want me? Oh, I'm sorry. 2012's staggering investigation of her own family's secrets, Stories We Tell. Playing with the documentary form to explore the nature of memory, Polly's film confirmed her as one of Canada's greatest storytellers. Number one, Adonarjouat, The Fast Runner. We have made it to number one with a film that fittingly represents so many firsts. The first and still only Canadian film to win the Camera d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. The first full-length film to ever be written, directed, and acted entirely in the Inuktitut language. The first Indigenous film Canada ever submitted to the Academy Awards. And it's hard to argue with its placement. The film takes us on an extraordinary journey through an Inuit legend that has been passed down through centuries of oral tradition. It also changed the way the world defined Canadian cinema. Thank you so much for celebrating these great achievements by Canadian filmmakers. You can read the entire top 50 at cbc.ca slash 50 greatest films.